You guys, I just had to do this. I had to do this. I had to share this with you. I had to make your life a little easier. I had to make my life a little easier. All right, what is this video even about? This video is about how to convert the gauge of a knitting pattern so you can create the same pattern with a different needle size and a different thickness of yarn. Okay, so let's say you watched this video tutorial on how to knit this cowl scarf of mine, which I knit on nine millimeter needles with Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick yarn. And you wanna knit this same cowl with Lion Brand Heartland yarn on 5.5 millimeter needles. So how the heck do you convert this pattern to be the same size using a different yarn weight and needle size. Same thing for hats. How do I make this hat on worsted weight yarn? This was made with Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick yarn. You guys, same thing for my sweaters, okay? This, again, was knit on nine millimeter needles with Lion Brand Respun yarn. You guys love this cardigan and I get so many questions. Hey, I wanna knit that on worsted weight yarn. So yes, while I'm in the process of converting some of my patterns, I just had to create a basic tool, a simple tool, to help you understand how to convert knitting patterns, okay? My goal is to help you guys be more self-sufficient, more independent with knitting. See the big picture, kind of step back, understand things on a bigger scale, so that you can answer your own questions, you can convert your own patterns, that kind of thing, all right? So I created a tool, I spent some time today, actually I've had this created for a while because I use this myself, and I was like, you know what, what the heck? I am just gonna share this with you guys. And um, it is available for purchase for the cost of one pattern, okay? This tool will cost you what it costs to buy one pattern of mine, and you will be able to convert patterns simply, right? Like this is a simple tool, you will have to use your brain a little bit, um, but, this tool will help you a lot. You can take a look at my spreadsheet on, the, on this video and you could create this yourself, right? Like you could figure out the math, you could, you, could, you could do this yourself if you really wanted to, but you could spend the price of what it costs to buy a pattern and have the tools and, have, and download it right away and have everything you need. My goal is just to make this easy for you. All right, so I am gonna go through, I'm gonna walk you through how to convert a cowl a hat and something like this cardigan and depending on how much time this takes I might even show you how to convert something else okay so I'm gonna walk you through the big picture so you know how to use this tool and you can convert your own patterns first you will need the pattern you want to convert okay then you will need that patterns gauge or that gauge that you would knit that pattern so the original gauge and then you will need the new gauge of what you want to knit, what you want to use to knit the new project. So make sure you take the time to swatch. Swatch the original gauge, swatch the new gauge. Make sure you know your accurate gauge so you can put accurate numbers into the Excel spreadsheet. All right, I am going to hop on my screen share here and walk you through how to do this right now. Make sure you click the video description. The link to purchase this gauge converter tool is in the video description. Let's get started with this awesome gauge comparison tool. You guys are gonna love this. It's gonna really simplify your life and I'm gonna walk you through how to convert different projects, different things, how to think about this all in the big picture. Okay, first thing to note, there are two tabs. Gauge comparison with IN here at the bottom, that's for inches, and gauge comparison with centimeters, that's for centimeters. Okay, so if you feel more comfortable starting with centimeters, you can work with centimeters. Note that it will automatically convert to inches. Okay, so same thing. If you feel more comfortable starting with inches, once you input this with inches, it will automatically convert to centimeters. That being said, everything in this orange color it are boxes where you can input information, okay? Everything in blue is automatically calculated for you. So don't enter anything in blue, in the blue boxes. Let's get started. Okay, first thing you need to know is the original pattern gauge and the new gauge that you want to knit in, okay? So we're gonna start off with my simple cowl. This is a 
free video and tutorial pattern on my website and you guys use this a lot, but I've been getting questions on how to convert this. So I'm going to show you how to use this tool to convert this pattern. Okay. And again, you can figure out all the math and do this yourself. I thought I would just make life a little easier so you could download this. Okay, so once you have this open and you know what your original pattern gauge is, again, make sure you take the time to swatch your original gauge and your new gauge, okay? So you're gonna enter your original gauge, the pattern gauge into gauge one. And I know that I have 10 stitches in 13 rows in my four inches. So I literally within four inches have 10 stitches and 13 rows and four inches long, okay? My new gauge in Lion Brand Heartland yarn on 5.5 millimeter needles is 16 stitches and 22 rows. So I'm gonna enter that over here. 16 stitches and 22 rows. Okay, so I have my original gauge entered and my new gauge entered, entered. Now, I just wanted to show you these four different sections really quickly. Okay, you can convert stitches to inches. You can convert inches to stitches. You can convert rows to inches and inches to rows. So you can go either way with rows and stitches. So basically, when we convert patterns, we need to know length. We need to know with this how circumferences so that we can use that same circumference to cast on this, the right amount of stitches in our new gauge to get that same circumference. So a lot of times patterns, you know, won't say what the cast on stitch amount length is or width is, right? That's just not part of the pattern. Um, so what you can do is enter the cast on stitch amount to get you a length. And then we're going to take that length and figure out the new cast on stitch amount. So I am going to go to this first section, the stitches to inches converter. So the cowl pattern says to cast on 56 stitches, okay? The original pattern says to cast on 56 stitches. So I'm gonna come over here and enter 56 stitches and hit enter. And once I hit enter, the blue box automatically populates with the length, or in this case, it's knit in the round, so it's circumference of the cowl in that in that gauge so if i cast on 56 stitches in that gauge i'm going to get 22.4 inches so now i need to take that same length that same circumference and convert it to our new gauge so i'm going to come over here on this side and since we know our inches now we're going to start with inches so we're going to come over here to this sex section the inches to stitches converter section i'm going to type in 22.4 inches and hit enter. And now I've got 89.6 stitches. Okay. 89.6 stitches in 22.4 inches. So I know I need to cast on 89.6 stitches. Now, this is when it's going to spit out a pretty exact number. You're going to need to round this number up, right? So pay attention to the pattern. So when you knit in one by one rib, you need to have an even number of stitches. So for the cat cowl pattern, you cast on stitches and then you knit one by one rib. So I know I need to have an even number of stitches. So I'm going to take 89.6 and round that up to 90 stitches. So I will cast on 90 stitches and you can come over here and type cast on 90 stitches. Okay, just to help you remember what to do or you could take this, you could write this down in a notebook, okay? So I'm gonna cast on, now I know I need to cast on 90 stitches in my new gauge. I'm gonna look at the original pattern. The original pattern says to knit one by one rib for three rounds, okay? Sometimes my patterns say knit one by one rib for four inches, in which case you don't need to do any conversions because you already know the length. So you could literally knit one by one rib for four inches and be fine. There's no conversion necessary. But this pattern says to knit it in three rounds. So with to knit three rounds. So we need to figure out how long three rounds is in our original gauge. So if I come back over here and now we know the rows and we're trying to find the length. So I'm going to come over here to the rows to inches converter. So I'm going to type in three rows 
we're knitting in the round. So it's rounds, rounds, rows equals the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter. So I know that three rounds in my original pattern gauge is 0.9 inches, okay? So I'm gonna need to come over here to inches to rows converter, input that 0 0.9 inches, hit enter and boom, five rows or rounds. That's how many rounds I need to knit to get the same one by one ribbing effect on the pattern design in my new gauge, okay? So I'm going to come over here and just say one by one rib for five rounds. Again, you could also just write this in a notebook, okay? So then the pattern says to knit the, to knit stockinette stitch for a certain length. So you just knit stockinette for a certain length. And then it says you're gonna work two stitches, two rounds in one by one rib and bind off. So again, you are working so that the ribbing is the same length and we know that's 0.9 inches. So we are going to, if we know we need a total of five rounds, we're gonna work one by one rib for four rounds and then bind off. Okay, so that's how we quickly and easily converted a simple cowl pattern to a new gauge using this quick tool, all right? I hope that helps. Okay, I'm going to zero all this out now and I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing for my Bentley hat pattern. I'm gonna keep my gauge two in there, 16 stitches for 22 rows because I want to figure out how to convert this hat pattern with the same yarn. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this information and I'm gonna move over here. I know with this, Gauge this this pattern I used Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick on 10 millimeter needles. So my gauge is slightly different. It's nine stitches in 13 rows in um four inches. Okay. So in this case, this pattern tells me to cast on 40 stitches. Okay, 40 stitches, enter 40. I have 17.8 inches in circumference. I come over here to inches to stitches. We go from stitches to inches and then inches to stitches. So I need to type in 17.8 stitches over here. And I know I need to cast on about 71.2 stitches. I'm gonna round that up to 72 stitches for an even number for my one by one rib. Okay, one thing I wanted to note, you do need to take into account stitch multiples. So let's say that this pattern calls for a, a multiple of three plus two. Okay, so you'll need to make sure you pick a number that's divisible by three and then add two stitches to that. Okay, so let's just say that I would take 72 stitches and divide that by three and see if that's divisible by three. It is, it's divisible by three, it's 24. So I would just add two stitches. Okay, so 72 plus two stitches would be 74 stitches. If I needed to figure out how to fix my cast on stitch, multiple to meet the original stitch multiple. Okay, don't wanna to get too confusing with this. Point is you have to use your head a little bit if you, it's not like if the original pattern has a stitch multiple, you will need to figure out what that stitch multiple is, convert convert the pattern the same way I'm showing you, but then when you have that cast on stitch amount, you're gonna to have to adjust it to meet that same stitch multiple. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay, and then the pattern says to do ribbing for a certain length, knit the body for a certain length and decrease. So really there's nothing else to calculate. There's no, nothing else to calculate. Once you have the stitch on, the cast on stitch amount, there's nothing else to calculate. You just follow the pattern because it just gives you a length for ribbing and a length for stockinette and then you decrease. And that's it. Okay, so that's how you convert a simple hat pattern using this tool. All right, I'm gonna X everything out again. Next thing I wanted to talk about is converting sweaters or converting other kinds of garments, okay? You have to take a step back and look at how things are constructed to understand what measurements you need to know to figure out new stitch count. I've got this, un this is my unbound slipover vest. Okay, I'm just opening up my unbound slipover vest pattern, okay? And I am looking at the pattern and I'm finding out I'm gonna just take a look at how it's constructed. It's constructed in the round from the bottom up. 
and then you separate the front and the back, you work the back, and then you work the left and the right front. Okay, so the overall numbers I'm gonna pay attention to, I'm gonna write down overall stitch counts for certain critical things. So my cast on stitch amount, I'm just gonna write 112 stitches. My front and back is 56, okay? And then I'm gonna go to figure out what the left and right front are. So the left and the right front are half of the front and the back stitches. For my size, the left and right front stitches are 28 stitches. So I'm gonna write that down. Left front, right, I'm just gonna write left front, right front equals 28 stitches. Okay, so I've got that noted. And then just looking at this, there's no decreases, you know, at the underarms over here, there's nothing else. Um, the only thing to note is we need to know how many decreases to make for the V-neck to get to the same width up here. So we know what the width is down here. We because we've just we just looked at the left and right fronts. Now we need to figure out how much to decrease to get the same shoulder width at the top. So I'm going to see if I can look at the pattern and figure out how many stitches I've got at the top. Yes. So I'm supposed to have 18 stitches at the top of the shoulder for my size. So I'm just going to write shoulder equals 18 stitches. Okay. So I've got kind of the key things I need to pay attention to for my pattern, for my pattern in the new gauge. So I've got my 16 inches, my 16 stitches and 22 rows inputted here. Okay, so now I just need to figure out how many stitches to start with, how many stitches I need to, how many stitches I need for the front and the back, and how many stitches I need to reduce to to get to the shoulder. So first I need to enter my gauge, and that's 10 stitches, 13 rows. Okay, so basically to figure out overall cast on stitches. And this is just kind of, you kind of just, we're just kind of getting some overall numbers to get the big picture, okay? So if I cast on 112 stitches in my old gauge, that's 44.8 inches. So I can take 44.8 inches and convert that. And that's 179.2 stitches. I'm gonna round that up to 180 and see if this works. So we have our cast on stitch amount. You know that the front and the back are half of this. So we can just divide 180 by two, which is 90, but we can do that. And then basically we know that to get the left and right fronts, we have to divide the front in half again. So we can do the same thing, just divide 90 by two, which is 45, but we can just do that calculation. Okay, so in our top shoulder stitches, this is where we need to really figure out. We have 18 stitches at the top. That's 7.2 inches. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out how many stitches the top of the shoulder should be by typing in 7.2 inches. So that's about 28 stitches, 29 stitches. Okay, I'm gonna round that to 28 stitches. So 28 stitches for the shoulder. So I know I need to reduce from 40, here, we can just go like this. We know our front back is 56. We know our left front, right front is 45 stitches. And we know the top of our shoulder is 28 stitches, okay? So we need to reduce. We can Now we can follow the pattern very similarly now, okay? You've got your cast on stitch amount. You know what you need to divide the front and the back to. You know you need to work across 45 stitches to get the left and right front. And you now you know you need to reduce the V-neck to get to 28 stitches, okay? So yeah, it's like not perfect. It's not all plug and play. You do have to use your head a little bit, but I just walked you through how to convert a simple slipover vest to a totally new gauge. Okay. Totally new gauge. So there you go. I know it's not like all beautiful, but you do have to use your head a little bit, but that's how you convert a cowl, a hat, a sweater using this gauge comparison tool. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope this gauge converter tool is so helpful to you guys. My goal is to empower you to understand knitting on your own, to be more independent, more self-sufficient, answer your own questions. So I hope this tool helps you design and knit something you love to wear.